Those were the driving factors. Did he also mention to me in the past the, 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 the corruption related to the DNC server? Absolutely. No question about that. Um, but that's it. And that's why we held up the money. To be clear, what you just described is a quid pro quo. We do that all the time with foreign policy. We're holding up aid at the Northern Triangle countries so that they, uh, so that they would change their policies on immigration. President Trump's acting chief of staff, Mick Mulvaney, there clarifying those remarks from yesterday after he was called out for admitting a quid pro quo when it comes to Ukraine and military aid. Joining us now is former independent counsel and Fox News contributor, Ken Starr. Ken, good morning to you. I know you've had a chance to take this good all morning. in after it happened um, just less than 24 right. hours ago. So did he admit to a quid pro quo in that news conference yesterday? Pretty close to it, uh, but then he walked it back. And so remember, this is the give and take of a press conference, Sandra. Uh, I think there needed to be greater discipline in the message, if I may say so. But the real action continues to be on Capitol Hill. I think this is going to blow over pretty quickly. But now Mick Mulvaney may find himself under oath. And instead of just the give and take with the press, he's going to now have to say, okay, precisely what happened. Self-discipline. The stakes are extremely high. The impeachment train is on the tracks and it's rolling toward the station. Everyone needs to be very watchful and careful and guarded. John Ratcliffe was, spent some time with the president yesterday. He came on with this this morning and reacted to all of that. Here's John Ratcliffe. Remember what the quid pro quo is, using something to influence behavior. The quid pro quo is supposedly military aid. And what is undisputed at this point, Bill, is that no one in the Ukraine was aware that there was any discussion that military aid might be withheld for any reason at the time of the Trump Zelensky call. That makes a quid pro quo impossible. What about that? And the fact that, Ken, it was not, that money was not mentioned on that phone call where we have seen the transcript. And wouldn't it have been better for Mick Mulvaney to have said exactly that, right? That's what I'm saying. Get your message right. I think my interpretation of what Mick Mulvaney is a very smart, able guy, was talking about the way we conduct foreign policy and every administration conducts foreign policy. Uh, but he created this issue. Again, Sandra, I think the key in terms of impeachment is not what Mick Mulvaney says in a press conference. It's what's happening in the House of Representatives. And may I just say this, it is time for Americans to have a new mantra, regular order, <laughs> not give me liberty or give me death, but regular order. Let's have the House proceed, not in secrecy. Secrecy is completely inimical and inconsistent with American values, those precious rights to establish justice, which is what the preamble to the Constitution says. We don't have regular order right now, and I don't hear enough cries for let's let the sunshine in. Let's have transparency. The president's departing energy secretary, Rick Perry, also joined us earlier on this program, and he said there was no quid pro quo. Quo. Here's Rick Perry. There was no quid pro quo in the sense of what those folks out there would like for it to be, that we're going to give you this money unless you go investigate uh, Joe Biden and his son. I never heard that said anywhere, anytime, in any conversation. Perhaps that speaks to your point, Ken. Right. And Rick Perry is as honest as the day is long. Uh, and so he knew. He was part of the inner circle, right? And the president said, hey, I made the phone call because of Secretary Perry and so forth. We're going to have all of this noise. And I think the broader point is this is an impeachment process that's been in search of a rationale, right? The Mueller report, Russian collusion, the emoluments clause, now it'll be the Doral Country Club, et cetera. And Do you so take issue with that, Ken? Oh, in terms of, I think it's poor judgment, of course. Why would you, of all the places in the United States, uh, choose that? So, uh, again, the, the, the president follows his own instincts. I know it was recommended, or so we're being told. But, yes, I do say, if I were advising the president, and I'm not, don't do this. It's just another self-inflicted wound. But the, really the key thing is let's keep our eyes on the Senate. The House is involved in irregular order. It's going about it in the wrong way, but it has the raw power to do it. It's anti-constitutional, as dear Judge Bob Bork would say. It's anti-constitutional. It's not unconstitutional. But keep our eyes on the Senate. Is there, is there an expression of concern on the part of the Senate? And, and thus far, there doesn't seem to be. All right. Ken Starr, appreciate you coming back on the program. Great to see you this morning. Thank you. Good to see you, Sandra.